fungi are incredible opportunists. There are few terrestrial habitats that fungi haven't managed to colonise. In this video, we look at the diversity of fungi in Australia, the various habitat types, and the concept of categorising fungi by morpho groups. Australia is extraordinarily mega diverse. It's one of about 17 nations that harbour the majority of the world's species, including high numbers of endemic species. Think about how vast this country is, how relatively undeveloped it is, but also think about the great range of different ecosystem types, climate regimes and plant species. Each provides possibilities for colonisation by different species of fungi. Like Australian flora and fauna, fungi are adapted to a different set of pressures and influences compared to those elsewhere, such as fire, desiccation and nutrient-poor soils. It is the great variability in Australia, in particular the irregularity of rain, that is central to this ecological pulse. It is a driver of ecological innovation, of speciation, with animals, plants and fungi alike being highly adapted to deal with this variability and uncertainty. Not only do fungi occupy different habitats, but different substrate types within those habitats. Many fungi live in soil and some prefer particular types of soil. Other fungi live in wood, both on living trees or old logs on the forest floor. Some fungi are generalists while others are more specialised, inhabiting certain tree genera or wood, for example, at a particular stage of decomposition. A great range of fungi live in the assortment of organic matter that accumulates in forests and woodlands. Then there are those fungi that live their lives in the scats of herbivorous mammals. And some fungi live in other fungi. Organisms are understood and categorised in different ways. The use of what we call morpho groups reflects a way of categorising them based on their form or morphology rather than their underlying evolutionary relationships. Morpho groups are essentially arbitrary categories of convenience. Although each group is not definitive and some overlap, they help us become familiar with general sporophore anatomy and the great array of different forms. Among the most familiar fungi are those that produce sporophores resembling umbrellas, commonly known as mushrooms. And most mushrooms are referred to as agarics. Agarics produce sporophores with radially arranged lamellae, also called gills, on the underside of the pileus, that is, the cap. Mushrooms that share the umbrella shape but have undersides with pores instead of lamellae are commonly called baletes. Fungi that have pores but are typically hard rather than fleshy are known as polypores. Jellies have a gelatinous texture. Hydnoid or tooth fungi have tooth-like projections. And puffballs puff out their spores from a ball. One of the secrets to the success of the fungi, perhaps to that of all organisms, is the formation of symbioses or alliances. And that's the theme of the next video.